Okay, here we are at step four, the final step. And what's important at this step is that you operate with restraint. Don't get carried away and do a whole lot. Do just a little bit. So what we're going to do first here is work in the tree area. And basically with some dark, so I'm using my sap green here again, adding some uh, dilo blue and some ultramarine blue and a little bit of red so it doesn't get too candyish, too pretty. Come in here, put just a few darks in. Into the tree area. Using my flat brush, just kind of smooth out the tops a little bit. <coughs> like I say, not very much. <clears throat> Just a little bit, a little suggestion of detail. Often helps to get back a little bit, check out how it's going. I'm using this brush with a just a little bit of water in it so I can smooth out the tops and keep the bottoms hard so it'll give you the effect of light working on it there. Over here to this green area, get the bottom a little bit like that. <coughs> Next, I'm using my burnt sienna, mixing some ultramarine blue with it. It's pretty good and dark. Coming in here, putting those rocks, put in a little suggestion of shadows. <coughs> I'm figuring the light's coming generally, it's a cloudy day, but it's generally coming from over here. So I smooth out my darks toward the light. That is, wash out the wet paint I have there on the side toward the light. Well, I have this good dark here. Take advantage of it. <clears throat> what I need to do, get in here just right. I don't want this line going all the way along. This is the shadow of the water, the surf that's come up on the sand, right at its edge. Look a little more. Realistic, I'm dominant since so I don't want to get it too dark. It goes from realistic to surrealistic, and that is not good. Alright, still have my darks. I'm going to go the opposite direction on when I smooth it um, this time. By the way, what I did here was that I brought this painting here up to speed to this one so that I could go ahead and develop it further down here. So these were pretty much matching when I started this step. It's important for you to understand that why I'm going in this fashion. It just helps to divide them and show it to you in obvious steps. Okay. 
think we'll leave well enough alone there. Now, okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is the C part. Mixing again, starting with uh, thylo blue, coming in with some green. This is going to be a little darker. Sap green, thylo blue. And some lizard and crimson. That's the red I'm using throughout this entire painting, really. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do is come in under the white areas of foam in the water area with some darks. First, well, I can just come in. I don't know. A little more challenging to do this. Upside down. <laughs> One right about here. Now before that dries too much, wash out my brush, hit that sponge to get most of the water off of it, leave a little water, and I smooth out that wave downward. Hard tops, soft bottoms, except down here where I want to highlight that crashing foam. This is the point where you can run it if you keep going too long. So I want that to be boxy, so let's make that. All right, good. Now, also. First, at the bottom, here and there, a crashing wave. Like this. Then, next, come up right above what I just painted there. And soften upwards this time. This is the shadow on the foam, the crashing wave foam. Like that. I get a little too much. I just use a Kleenex and pull it out. Like that. Then Switch brushes so I get a nice point. Maybe just a touch more blue. Not too much. This is going to be light because this is going to be a little 
patches of the darker water that show through in spots on the foam. What's important with these is that you keep them light, maybe not quite that light, that you bury them. That's what's really important. Bury the shapes. Keep them going horizontal because that's the way they look to your eye. Just a suggestion of some patches in the foam. So I did some, but I didn't do a whole heck of a lot to this to finalize it. Just put in a few details, some darks here and there, some strategic ones. I have a little spot right here that I don't like, but a rock while it was wet, the paint there leaked down into the water. I just move it, wet it a little bit and blot it up. So there we go, to review. <clears throat> First step was pencil, simple pencil sketch. Go over and correct that sketch, adding ink, waterproof ink. Fix it up the way you want it, get it ready. Float in initial washes, uh, most of them fairly light. See the difference here? Much darker here, lighter here. Get the general average color of the area pretty much to right on or as close as you can or as close as you want it to be. Then come in with final touches, use your strength, don't go overboard, put in some details. Generally that uh, amounts to darker versions of the color that's already there pretty much. And so that's it. So the next time, <clears throat> in the next series uh, of uh, clips, and lessons will deal with equipment that I use outdoors and also uh, in a little while we'll be doing an actual field demonstration where I'll get out on the field and do the whole process from scratch in all four steps to show you how I go about that. Hope you enjoyed this and come back for more.